Hello, Go Enthusiasts. Last week we covered game one of the Chuja Lanky Cup Grand Finals. It's a best of three. Shinjin So won game one, but this is game two. Let's dive right in. Shinjin So is black, Guja Hao is white. Shinjin So starts with an interesting opening, enclosing the 4 4 corner before enclosing the 3 4. According to the old theory, the 3 4 has a less solid grip on the corner, or like a, a less balanced grip is the way to put it. So by adding another stone to the 3 4 corner, you make like a, a balanced shape and adding another stone to the 4 4. White can even still come in, so it's like considered less good. But to be honest, that opening theory was not useful. It was not good, and Shinjin So is going to show us, yeah, we don't need to do it like that. You can, but it's completely fine to enclose your 4 4 cloners first as well. Guja Hao approaches the 3 4 corner, Shinjin So backs off, and Guja Hao approaches the other one. Shinjin So can approach over there, and then he kicks this one and pincers. So he's launching an attack on those two stones, but I think a lot of people wouldn't choose this exact pincer. A lot of people want to play closer to those two stones because this pincer leaves White the chance to take a two space space. But White doesn't do that. White runs like this and, and runs again. So uh, actually, these days, if we just take a two space space, it's like fine. You can do that. But it's a little bit cramped in the sense that if White wants to show that they take care of this group, in a way which gets like more space than intended or like more shape than intended somehow. This one is not really going to be useful for that kind of like winning variation. On the other hand, if white tries to take care like this, white has a lot more weaknesses. So uh, it's more likely that white will have to sacrifice those two stones or something like that. But white also is appearing to make a much larger space. So this is more of a challenge to black. It's like, hey, black, if you cannot uh, take hold of my weaknesses right now, then this way white can gain. White can get a shape which is too good. So it's a nice challenge by Guja Hao here from the start. Black needs to make sure that he's strong before he reaches in and handles any white weaknesses. So he plays this one. This one also helps against any like white attach. Basically, it just makes this R9 stone very strong now. And black can continue by attacking either side, the white stone in the corner or the white stones in the upper right. So Guja Hao chooses to defend his corner first. If black would kick, that would take a lot of territory and also keep some pressure. So this way, at least black doesn't have very much territory, although he still has plenty of potential pressure. This white group is considered alive now because it can either run to the side, so move like R7 would definitely make enough space to get two eyes, or it could capture a stone in the corner, again, definitely able to make two eyes after that. So black attacks the upper right, and he does it with a large knight. I think the natural way to try to play this is to attack with a large uh, is to attack with a small knight. I think the natural way to try to play this is to attack with a small knight, but Shinjin So's attacking with a large knight is good. It's a good challenge. Um, white in the game chooses to just cover on top, and that's because he could not try to cut. If he tries to cut like this, then Black has this clamp, and that makes a double threat to connect either over top with a double uh, tiger's mouth, it's quite a pretty shape, or underneath on the second line. So uh, black could connect against the normal white attach. That's the normal way that you try to cut a large knight. If white does the not normal way, which is to cut across with a knight's move, then black could block this way and simply run out, and white would have two weak groups. This is not a good variation for white. So uh, since white was not able to cut this, he chose to just try to connect on top and make his shape in the center, but black could play this move. And when white does this, black can extend here, and white has to capture that one stone. The shape is a little bit awkward for white. Actually, you can see from this variation why playing originally the large knight was better than the small knight. If instead it had been like small knight, white would block on top, and then here we would want to do this anyway, but this is sort of similar to the game, but black has exchanged Q11 for P11, which is another way to try to save those stones, but it's a way that actually makes it much harder to save your one stone in the center. Now, if black tries to run like this, uh, white can exchange a couple moves here, play here, and net. So you can see this exchange actually really, really hurts black. That's why instead of playing the small knight, it was much better to play large knight like Shinjin said. So in the game, weight extends in the center. It has mostly captured that one stone, but there's still some uh, problems, some liberty problems with these three stones. 
So Shinju So starts by playing here. Exchanging these, the intent is to maximize his corner, maximize his benefit here. And white kind of has to push here, forcing black to respond and take more power and then connect like this. If white had originally connected this way, then black could block here in sente. White would have to answer somehow, otherwise black could uh, cut like that and capture these stones. Actually, you may wonder, why didn't black try to cut earlier like this? It looks like it's working, right? Like white can't cut this originally, but white can start with this move. Then after black answers, then you can play here. And if black wouldn't answer and play in the center, something like this, it's going to be very difficult to capture this. If you play on this side, white has this move. And then after this, white can cut and eventually save the group on the side. Anyway, this is gonna be a good variation for white because black has already paid a lot and failed his attack. So that's why they played uh, strongly here. White managed to connect his stones on the side. This black group can potentially be attackable later, but it's, it's pretty strong for now. There's a vital point in the center. If white can take that, it makes a nice shape for white. If black takes that, it makes a manual panuki. It's quite large. But for now, they're going to Tanuki and try to gather territory across the rest of the board. Black looks to make some big shape on the top side. White saves his corner from an early 3-3. Black grows the top side again. White takes the left side. This is necessary when black grows like this because black is also threatening to attack those stones. So it makes sense to try to take the left side both as a... Um, big territory move, but also as a preventative measure against the potential to be attacked. And finally, black plays this vital point, basically because there's nothing uh, that urgent on the rest of the board here. And white agrees, actually, that there's nothing so urgent and just plays the bamboo. This may look slow to play a bamboo here, but it's actually very nice to keep this black group potentially still weak and make sure that this white group also has as much strength as it can. This is like definitely the biggest shape point left on the board. But it's a bit unfortunate that this came in like Sente for Black. You can say that Black gained a little bit by getting to play there first. And maybe Wei should have tried to tried to quickly go there himself. Okay, Black shoulder hits now. And the idea is that Black wants to try to take benefit on the bottom side. So he plays here. This move would be unthinkable before AI. This, it looks crazy. We're just allowing our opponent to Hane at the head of two stones. But often this kind of thing can be played. It can be good. And white doesn't even play the Hane at the head of two stones. He plays here. Um, if you play the Hane, then uh, something like this will happen. The point is, although the shape looks bad in the sense of control of the center, the black territory on the bottom is big. You know, fifth line territory is, is large. It's considerable. And so this shape on the bottom side is actually more efficient than the simple dominating the contact fight in the center for white, since it's not really clear how the center is going to be useful when black already has a stone at age 15. So um, if that Hane isn't necessarily a punishment, this can actually be a good move. Actually, the theory behind it, the reason why we would play there first, the normal moves are to jump and to play the extend, right? If you play extend, white can play here. Then it's very hard for black to ever try to take the bottom side later. So all you have to do is fly with your two stones in the center. It's a little bit uncomfortable for black. It's hard to see where he's gaining. If you jump, then white can instantly pincer. And then later, if you would ever block, white has this wedge, and black shape is very awkward. It's difficult to handle. So by simply playing this move first, now if white does this one, obviously we can break it. <laughs> if white does this one, then we can just extend. So we don't have to suffer the, the wedge. Basically, this move means however you try to fight on the bottom side, the shape is a bit better for black compared to if you would just try to run and save his stone first. The only punish to this one is for white to control the center first. So you can try this whenever you think the center is not important and the bottom side would be very good if you manage to get it. I think it's a pretty instructive move by Shinjin So. I think this is an even more instructive move by Gu Zhe Hao. This is a very cool attach, right? It just looks like some random thing on the outside of the board. This move means 
Guzha Hao understands that Shin Junso is trying to challenge. His bottom side shape would be too big. So what he wants to do is just make some random group on the bottom side and save it. And then Shin Junso can't possibly get too much territory on the bottom side because Guzha Hao is a group there. So when Shin Junso hanes and pushes, Guzha Hao just answers everything. And Shin Junso plays this one. That was Sente. We needed to answer on the other side and plays here. So Shin Junso is looking to cover his cutting point there in Sente. He still just has to push here, and Wei can jump. And you can see, this was Gu Hao's plan. He understood Shin Junso wanted to take a large position on the bottom side when he played the descent there. And he says, I won't answer. I won't play just the simple way that you're prepared to play. He plays in exactly the way which makes Shin Junso feel awkward about continuing his plan. Of course, Shin Junso can continue to attack but Gu Zhihao can break out. And uh, Gu, Gu Zhihao has enough strength here. There's no way that Shin Junso could try to just like <laughs> straight straight cover this. Uh, there's going to be some something getting captured here. You can see this is a ladder variation. So definitely necessary for Shin Junso to take a tiger's mouth here. And at that moment, Gu Zhihao has to answer because this has covered that cut that, that he was using to... Uh, come out. So that means that Shin Junso can also take the extend, leaving a lot of pressure on the white corner. White needs to answer that like this, and black can run out. So we come to a position from Gu Zhihao's attach where the strategy has gone basically exactly as he planned. Shin Junso has managed to put pressure on that, and he's going to run his group, but Shin Junso doesn't have territory. All he has is the attacking potential against that group and maybe a little bit more potential towards the left side as well. Gu Zhihao plays here. We're going to see Gu Zhihao in this game, just like last game, perform very nicely for double attacks. So in the last game, he played a couple times some attachment or some contact move, looking to gain power to then attack Xin Jin So on a uh, strategic level, on a, on a direction level. And this is the same kind of idea. Gu Zhihao is waiting for Shin Junso to connect, and then Gu Zhihao will have a cut to attack the group on the right side. But by shape, connect has to be the right move to play. Shin Junso tries to play the peep first. So he's looking to force White to connect now. This exchange is like Shin Junso is saying, your three stones will be heavy now and not after I connect here. So he was thinking later on, if he tries to make that exchange after playing this connect first, White will not answer and try to save these three stones. They're only important right now. That's why Shin Junso exchanges this peep and then connects here. And Gu Zhihao uh, has to play here. So if he would originally try to attack that group on the right side, it's a little bit too early. So something like this. Uh, this is a very passive way to do it, but even still, you can see that the white group is getting in quite a bit of trouble in the center. So Gu Zhihao isn't ready to cut over there yet, but he can't just run in the center either because Shin Junso has a Tezuji lined up. If Gu Zhihao would just run, trying to prepare something there, Shin Junso will play this move. And there's no great answer for Gu Zhihao. If he plays here, then this cut is very, very annoying. You can see these four stones are already like almost dead because of the peep. And if he plays here, then Shin Jin So can play this one. Shin Jin So looks to be making a base with his group here, and even attacking White as he does that, uh, the flow, the fighting flow, should be good for Black. So that's why Gu Zhihao tries to exchange these moves. Shin Jin So exchanges a push as well. But Gu Zhihao still gets Sente here and then can jump. So now Black has no direct way to attack the corner and is in some trouble with his group on the bottom left and the cut on the right side. So Gu Zhihao has sort of combined two threats here. Uh, I think, by the way, it's kind of interesting to notice Shin Jin So made this one push. Normally we shouldn't do that because it loses the liberty, but in this position, it might not be so bad to exchange rather than just answering here because sometime later, if black tries to push, uh, White may choose something other than just connect. So, for example, if White ends up being in, in big trouble, he may play here. And this connect by itself, it leaves some Aji later when uh, Black tries to peep that Black can try to race, uh, make a capturing race against this White group from the inside. 
So he exchanges that peep now to create the cutting point. And then when white plays here, Shinjin So plays this one. So he's saying, I created that cutting point, so your group in the corner is actually in some trouble. I can come to break your left side. It's a very, very big move, and it's defensive for the bottom left. And uh, he's saying he's also keeping some pressure on keeping an eye on that group in the corner. But Gu Zhihao can cut here. And because white has another move in the center, this bottom side group will not get in trouble as he does this. Black has to play this move, taking a bamboo. So this is starting to make some eye shape for black on the right side. White can still continue to try to attack it like this. And you can see there's no way for this white to be disconnected. Basically, this bottom side white group has become very strong as it attacks this black group. And black even needs to save his group in the bottom corner as well. So white plays here. This one is sente. This one is also sente. And at the end, finally, Shinjin So is alive. There is uh, a Miai, and white can leave. So at this point, if white plays here, black captures the stone on the side. And if white saves the stone on the side, black plays here to live. So Shinjin So knew this. He was careful. He read it out. He's sure that he can live here. But actually, the fighting flow was not very good. Even though black managed to save, white's moves that were attacking were very natural, just also attacking this group and defending his group on the bottom side. So overall, this position is actually churned in favor of white, although black managed to make the defense. And I think actually a big part of that is black's defending shape on the bottom side was incorrect. Uh, he played this move, but it means that after white plays this attach, black has to answer again to live. He has to play this move. Otherwise, white would have the Atari here, and the black shape, the black eye space, looks very uh, thin. It's very difficult to make to make your second eye. So this move, it covers white's Atari. It's a pretty big territory move, but the, uh, the black group had to respond to this M2. So Black saved his group there. He saved his group there. This group was the one that was originally defended. But White, in the meantime, became very strong in the center, got this M2 in Sente, and now can play the next move on the left side, attacking this Black group. So Black has somewhat lost control of the game. And in my opinion, it's because the uh, jump here, that jump, it should have been one to the left, like this. Then if White plays this jump, Black can play this Hane. And White will have a hard time continuing to cut the Black groups. Now, if White tries to cut, it would have to be this way. But Black can play like that. And you can see Black's eye space is much, much bigger if White wants to try to cut. And even there's still a potential connection on the side. So if you play this way, what's, what's more likely going to be what happens is just like this and here. And now you can see that um, eventually, black can connect on the first line. So his group in the corner, although it has hardly any eyes, it does manage to connect to his group on the left, so he can save those two groups together without spending a move uselessly at S1. That's not a very big move um, to play. So instead of connecting on the first line underneath, which should also feel quite painful, I still think white is a bit better in that variation. Um, Shinji So choose to, chooses to live separately, but it means that White can launch a strong attack. And I think Shinji So knew here, it can be normal to just run out. This is your first intuition. But I think he knew that if he plays like that, White will lead, and White doesn't have any thin shapes throughout the board. So it's going to be difficult to catch up. It's going to be difficult to find your moment to make your way back into the game. So he tries to make his way back into the game right away. He plays this peep and white connects. That actually loses a little bit of potential end game, although it increases the chances that black can do something in the corner here. If later on black plays uh, h1 while he's living or just as an end game itself, uh, there was going to be this kind of an end game Tesuji. So when you play here, that Tetsuji is gone. There's no longer any chance that we can use this cut from an endgame perspective or from a direct perspective for co-threats or anything like that. It's 
exactly meaning that Shinjin So will use the Aji from the corner. So he prepares again, he makes another peep, wait, connects, and he plays here. And Shinjin So is basically thinking that this is going to be Sente towards the corner. And Gu Hao is not thinking that. <laughs> Gu Hao says, no, that's not Sente. What are you talking about? So Shinjin So tries to show. He's like, hey, I can play this move. And when you block, so White had to block to make sure that Black wouldn't just get some eye space on the side. Black plays the descent. And now Black is the one with the eye space in the corner. And White doesn't have eye space at all. So it looks like this should be a squeeze for Black. So although Black may still die in a capturing race, Black is hoping to get all of the moves on the outside in Sente and then be able to live easily with the amount of strength that that implies. But White plays here. And I think this was the winning move by Gu Hao. This was a really, really nice way to try to start taking liberties from Black. Because uh, what that one means is that there is a, another potential liberty on the side over there, that Black needs an approach move on the first line to be able to take the liberty underneath this area. If Wei had simply done this the normal way, like this, then I think Black planned to play here, and like this. Wei has to play here so that Black wouldn't get two eyes, but Black does not need to capture and make a co. He can just directly play from the outside, like this. Then White needs to capture and connect, connect, and you can see Black gets every move on the outside in Sente. What that means is that Black will probably have a very easy time from here to live. So this variation is not bad for Black. But when White plays here, White doesn't give Black the same kind of potential to make liberty problems from the corner. If Black plays this one, White can even Tenuki, <laughs> and even still just, just uh, capture this Black inside. So Black needs to play here if he would start a liberty race. Then even if it just goes the normal way, like this, and we start filling liberties, you'll see that this White is winning by two liberties. So eventually here, white doesn't even need to Atari right away because the F1 is covered. Black needs another approach move at H1. That means that if black would connect at C2 and try to squeeze from the outside, white could at some point not answer and take the big move on the outside. So Shin Jun So has to take his eyes in the center directly. He has to play like this. But when white plays here, he realizes if he just answers that eye shape is going to be so small. He'll have to make a second eye, and making the second eye on the side here, even if you can get H1 and Sente, is not very easy because this group still has to be alive. So if you try to play L2 and get too many Sente moves from here to make your eye, then uh, you're just going to naturally die in the bottom right corner instead. So Shin Jun So is basically panicking at this moment, and he tries to fight. Uh, you have to do something on the outside in this kind of position. Because if you just live inside, it's going to be uh, so painful. You're going to have to pay something huge somewhere. Either this is just captured way too easily, either the bottom right is going to die, or we're just going to give way an insanely good shape on the outside. So we have to try to fight, but Gu Hao plays this move. It's very, very sharp. The clamp is causing Black to have two connection problems. So there's no option but for Black to be cut. Then Black has to rely on counter pressure against these four stones. So he plays the Hane and the Tiger's Mouth, and he has to show that this has a serious threat on the left side. And Gu Hao disagrees. He plays the push, Black answers, staying connected. Gu Hao Atari is from this side. Uh, important not to Atari from uh, here, although it looks like it's breaking the bamboo because you can now not cut and this would actually just be helping black. So Atari from this side instead means that you do not lose a liberty in the center or on the left side there. And white can now answer here. Black is in big trouble. His only way to live on the bottom side now 
would be to die at the bottom right. He has no eye there. He has only a potential eye there. This group is basically just dead. He clamps. So he's trying to run it out to the left side and take an eye on the left. So Kuja House says no. And Shinji so peeps. And it looks like these stones are in huge, huge trouble. But Guja Hao has read this extremely carefully. And he knows the one way to save it. So Shinjin So re reads it as well. So he plays some exchanges in the bottom right. Those aren't good moves. It's just because Shinjin So is reading over here. All his ways that he can do something. And he eventually just decides this one is the toughest challenge to wait. But there is one way to continue to save that group which is to attach here. And when black plays this move, to play this move. And the meaning is, the whole time, white needs to try to connect underneath. That was always the threat. That's always the main thing that white should be trying to do. You know, if black plays this one, then white should be pushing through Atari here trying to do the same kind of thing. We can't capture those stones because we're short on liberties, but we can play this attach, this Atari, this Atari, and connect somehow. Probably I should do it this way. And you can see that white is safe. So in the game, we should try the same kind of thing even though black plays that way. We play the attach one time and then here. It was necessary because if we just play here directly, black can try to play this one and at this point we still have this move but other than that there's no way to connect underneath you can see if it goes here then this is the variation which Shinjin So is hoping for where everything is just well connected for black but you can see this move is so important that's the vital point which causes black to have several cutting problems in the center and it means that when this one happens Although black plays here, all the same, white can play here, and it's both threatening to connect that way and connect underneath. So black plays this move, and white connects here, and there's not enough of a liberty shortage for black to cut this. So black is going to try to attack the entire white group on the left side. Actually, white could just play some defensive move like this, save his group, and because this black group in the bottom left is dead, white will win the game easily. But they would never play easily. Guja Hao cuts here, thinking that it's just basically a better way to defend the group by uh, causing there to be problems in black shape as well. So he's attacking from the center, but mostly just attacking here as a method to counterattack. Eventually, when he protects here and black plays this one, he plays here. And Guja Hao basically knew all the time that he would get his chance to come back to the upper left, and he just made these exchanges to make black shape in the center now very awkward and insecure. Yeah, now he plays in the center like this. Guja Hao is basically just waiting for <laughs> for uh, uh, for Shinjin So to give up on attacking him. There's no chance that his group on the bottom side would die, that his group on the right side would die, or that his group on the left side would die. But that's the only thing that Shinjin So can hope for. So Shinjin So Hanes, and Guja Hao plays this Hane, making some counter pressure against this black black. Cuts there, wait, make sure that he's alive on the left, and black plays this attach. If Guja Hao would just answer, then maybe black would get enough power to strike back in the center someday. So Guja Hao is very, very like mindful. <laughs> he plays this attach, allowing that, and he just doesn't care at all about saving his stones on the right, which is the correct way to handle this. There's no chance now that Shinjin So can win the game if there's no way that he can score a victory off of these stones becoming like heavy and something that Guja Hao like really cares about, could lose a lot if he dies with them. Like as long as Guja Hao is just accepting death with those stones, there's nothing that Black can do to gain. So Guja Hao keeps pressure in the center. Shinjin So has to strike back. He's making some cut like this. Striking, striking, striking. Eventually Guja Hao plays here and Shinjin So has nothing left to do but resign. There's two cuts. There's a cut here and a cut here. So White will be able to capture some stones that will save his group on the bottom, save his group in the center, and whatever Shinjin So can capture over here, it wouldn't be enough. So Guja Hao wins this game in a very strong attack against the left side group. Basically, before that, Guja Hao's attacking method was to leave 
two things that he was keeping pressure on at all times to deny Black's chances to make any nice to Suji to defend himself well. And because he just left that pressure on Black for a long time, this was like a very, very long attack by Gu Zhihao. Although Xun Jin So could save himself everywhere, Gu Zhihao slowly gained, slowly gained, and it caused Xun Jin So to become a little bit impatient towards the corner. Then when Gu Zhihao showed the beautiful winning move of the diagonal here, gaining a liberty in the capturing race in the corner so that Xun Jin So does not have a direct squeeze, Xun Jin So had nothing left to do but be extremely passive or, as he did in the game, die and hope to make a comeback in the fighting. But there was basically only the, just this one fighting left. I guess I can show one more move over here, which is this move. After this one, White has only one way to save his stones, which is to cut like this, play here. Now this is threatening to capture those two stones and save his group if Black answers that. However, let's say this one then white has in the center a net like this. And because those stones are captured with two liberties, the white group on the side with three liberties would not die. Lucky. <laughs> of course, it's not lucky. It's all skill, all read out by Gu Zhihao from a long time ago, probably even when he was pushing through over here. But at least when he descended here, he was confident that he did not need to play the uh, defending move in the center. Very, very well done by Gu Zhihao. And uh, I'm excited to cover game three next week. Toodaloo, I'll see you then.